Okay, so these are the visual elements for this video. Orange, popsicle, um, roasted seaweed, uh, whatever. Um, anyway, I gotta get on with it because I'm running out of space. So here are the visuals, here are the visuals. Popsicle, strawberry cream popsicle, Dougie, Dougie. Okay, so I was just explaining to my beloved that um, although I really like Screen Prism, who has since changed their name to The Take, which I think was a mistake. It does sound too much like The View, and The Take was a great name. No, excuse me. I don't like The Take. Screen Prism is a beautiful name. Screen Prism, one word, capital screen, capital prism, much like Film Joy, my favorite channel. So The Take had an idea that the, what's wrong with Fifty Shades of Grey is that it's a fantasy that a man who's achieved something really great would be interested in a young woman who's achieved nothing. Well, this makes no sense, actually. It's the, one of the dumbest shade, takes on Fifty Shades of Grey I've ever heard. I think Twilight and Fifty Shades of Grey reflect something that's happening in the collective unconscious and therefore can't be dismissed, dismissed as crap. It has to do with men and women and power and gender and guilt and transformation and um, reassimilation. You know, you have a revolution, but then you have, you have to reassimilate. You know, like punk broke all the rules and then post-punk brought back... You can have a post-punk love song. I don't know if you can have a punk love song. Anyway, so Anastasia is not a loser by any stretch of the imagination. She, um, my boyfriend interrupted and said, isn't she valedictorian? Which is surprising. He, I had no idea he would know that. And I said, no, her, her roommate is that they decided to do, to flip the, the, the slut, um, stereotype by having her roommate who is a bit of a slut. And I don't mean that in a bad way be also the valedictorian. I said, but the movie opens with, I said, Anna's a meek character, but when her friend keeps harping about whether she's going to know how to get to the, to the building to interview Christian Grace, she says, I have a GPS and I have a, uh, a 4.0 GPA, so I think I can handle it. Uh, and then I mentioned that when she graduates from college, she gets a good job on her own. And I said, she loves English literature. She, she has deep interests. She's not, you know, shallow. She's not a careerist. She's able to get a good job, but she didn't choose a lucrative. Anyway, you know, she's a solid, like I said, you know, as about as solid a bourgeois citizen as you can be in the best way. Not, not shallow, not a careerist. Um, I said she comes from a good family. Uh, her dad died and her mom's been married four times, an incurable romantic. But her mom is extremely emotionally present. She didn't come up. She didn't show up for the graduation, which is weird. But that's a plot contrivance. Her mom is extremely emotionally present. This is our commitment ring, and it's got. Um, we haven't had time to have it sized, and I don't think I'm ever going to wear it on the engagement finger because the the, the rock is so big. It would, it would it would look weird on my finger. But anyway, um, so 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 uh, yeah, I bought it myself. But you know, he buys things too, and that's. Uh, so who knows? We probably both think we spend more. So, okay, so, you know, she comes from a really together family. Um, her stepdad's great. Oh, yeah, the stepdad who raised her, she considers her father because she didn't know her father, really, and she loves him to death. That's solid stuff. And she's um, emotionally intact. She's shy and insecure about her looks, although not obviously about her let's say, academic ability. This is the screenplay, keep in mind. I, I could not f bring myself to read the book, but obviously the architecture was in there, and that's what I mean about the collective unconscious, that this, this was waiting to happen. Now, some women want to be submissive, and they don't, they want to be submissive in the bedroom and not in real world, and they don't want to be perceived as less than. In fact, it's not uncommon, both for men and women, the more daunting your career is, and the more demanding, whether it's because of external demands or because you're like a solopreneur or, or an artist and it's all on you. Anyway, so she is emotionally intact. She's fully qualified. Um, and he is damaged goods. He's damaged goods. And by the way, he made those billions on the back of his adoptive family's wealth. He's not a self-made man. He, he, since being rescued from his um, crack addict um, whore mother, which is... Mm, I, don't have time to be more gentle in how I say that. Um, he has lived a life of privilege. Um, and she is perfectly qualified, not just to be the powerful man's wife, which we see in the third movie, but more importantly, to be his redemption, as he perceives in her that she is the one who finally put him back together. He says to, um, what's her name? You taught me how to fuck. Anastasia taught me how to love. Now, that might sound like cheesy dialogue, um, a la, I, I don't like sand, 
but just like I don't like sand is what a lame young man might say, it's just the truth, you know? This other woman taught him at an inappropriately young age how to fuck, and his girlfriend taught him to love.